This short video, I'm just going to show you how to use P5 to visualize a simple CSV file. And the CSV file, so the Excel file or comma separated values, is this one, which contains a list of fruits and vegetables and then their uh, calories and the amount of serving. And we're going to visualize those in different ways. So, um, right, that's it. Let's get started. So the first thing that we need is this file and I'll link to it. And as you can see, it's not really showing the way that we want it to show in the sense that we really want to see columns here. But in fact, we don't really see the columns. We see just like one column, one long column for all of these things. And this is a problem and we'll get to that later why that is. Um, but just let's get the P5 thing on the road and then we'll see how we can look at the data, how we can tell that the data is wrong in P5 and how to fix it. So the first thing that I would do is um, uh, read this post. So this is a thing that explains what P5 can actually do, how we can load these things. That's what we're going to try here. But we're going to do this all on our own machine. So we're going to go to P5.js and then download the local copy. And this is the one we're interested in, complete library. We're going to download that and then choose the desktop here. It's going to give me a zip file. I'll unzip this and this is called P5. I'll just call it P5 projects. Um, right, so that's my folder. I'm going to open that folder in Visual Studio Code, which is right here. Open folder, choose the whole folder, P5 projects. Um, and then this empty example, this is the one that I want to work from. So I'm going to leave that as is, but I'm going to duplicate that folder and call this um, CSV visualization, for example, so that we can copy this empty example, whatever we want. So this contains two parts, an index.html file and a sketch.js that actually contains a sketch. Um, so we might want to try here writing a small rectangle like 10, 20, 30, 40, just so we can get something to show and then use live server um, to actually see it. So if you haven't installed live server, you can do that here from the extensions. And then either it says go live here or you can go to view command palette, choose live server, open with live server. So that's going to start our server here. Um, and now we can choose, uh, so this is in the index, but as you can see, this P5 project doesn't contain an HTML file. Uh, so we have to choose this one, CSV visualization. We click that one. And that's going to show a little rectangle. If it doesn't, and in fact, uh, always I would suggest is to open the inspector and then specifically open the console um, and then look at the console here. And we see that we get an error. That's because we are using the sound library. Now, this visualization doesn't need sound. So we're going to turn that off to get rid of these errors because they don't actually, are, they're not relevant for our projects. So we're going to index.html in the CSV visualization and then just deleting this line. We only are interested in P5 itself. And now we get this nice thing without any errors. Another thing that we want to do is if we inspect is that we can see the canvas is just 100 by 100 pixels. That's the default that P5 gives us, which is a bit too small. So in setup, we're going to uh, use create canvas and then set a canvas size of 800 by 600. So we have some more room to play with and then maybe set the background to 200 or something. So you can actually see um, this thing here, maybe 220. Okay, so that's our uh, background and you see it runs until here. Cool. So now it's time to um, get our data in. And the first thing that we need to do, of course, is to copy that CSV file here. And where do we put it? Well, we can immediately put it here, uh, like as such, or we can make a subfolder um, and we can call this whatever we like. We just have to know the name and refer to it later. So I would call this assets, but you can also call it data or CSV files or whatever. Um, and that's the place where this thing is going to go. And then the next thing, and this is the most important thing when we're using CSVs is to use load table. So we're going to go to the reference, look at load table. And this is the function that we want. And as you can see here, it's in the preload function because it's something that has to be loaded before the rest can actually execute. So load table actually waits until all of these things that are preloaded are available. So that's what we want to do. We want to, in our sketch.js, make a new function preload. 
And here we want to um, make our uh, table here. Uh, this name is a name we can actually choose ourselves. Note that it's important that we don't do this here as such. Um, load table. I mean, this will work, but the problem is that we uh, can't actually access it from on one of the other functions because this um, table variable is now only uh, a scoped, as it's called, so only available within these brackets. So we have to get that out of the brackets. And the way that we do that is by defining it here, let table. So we create an empty variable here and then in preload set it. And then that allows us in the other functions like setup and draw to actually access that table. So here in setup, we're just going to log the table just to see if we get some output here. Note that print works as well. That's just a P5 thing. Now, if you go to the console, we can see it actually printed the, the uh, table, which is fine. It says there's 43 rows. And here for columns, it says it says one row with null. So apparently, of course, this is wrong. So there's something uh, here going on. So let's look at our CSV file. And we can do that also from Visual Studio Code. There are some plugins that make it easier to work with CSV files. Uh, now I'm, I don't have any of them installed. So it's just showing me here as white text. Um, but as we could tell from the uh, CSV visualization here, uh, the top row is actually problematic because this is the actual top row, right? Food and serving, serving calories and so forth. So we have to get rid of this row. <clears throat> now, if we look at it in the inspector, we can see this looks much better because we have our different columns here and we have our uh, different rows here. Now, this second row is still problematic because this is the units and it's uh, P5 is going to treat that second row as actual data. So we don't want that. So this row can actually go away. We don't need that. And now it looks like we have the file that we want. But if we go to P5, we see that we still have one column. Now we can refresh. We still have one column and the reason and, and every row is just basically everything here. And the reason why is because um, this uses semicolons and not columns. So P5 really needs you to use semicolons, which we don't have here. It also needs something else. And that's something that I forgot here. We have to specify CSV and we also have to specify that the first row is the header row. So let's do that first and see if that fixes our problem. Um, spoiler alert, it won't. Uh, but at least now we have one column. So we have one column, but it's just everything after each other, food and serving, serving calories and so forth. And then all of the rows, but they're all like one row. So we have to fix that. Um, what I suggest if you're working with your own file is to use Google Docs on specifically Google Sheets, because there you can download this as a CSV and that will actually give you the commas. But here, because it's such a simple file, what I can do is just do replace, search for all the semicolons and replace them with commas and then replace all of them. So that's going to give me the file in the finder. This still looks exactly the same because the finder can handle semicolons and colons just fine. But here, uh, something changes in P5 because now we have 19 columns, which is much better. Um, cool. So we can now work with our file and the way that we work with our file and we can look at that from the reference is that the table object actually has uh, a number of attributes or a number of um, methods that we can call, like, for example, get row count, get column count, get string, and so forth. And these are the ones that we are going to use to actually make our visual visualization. So we're going to set up a loop that's going to loop through all of the rows. Uh, note that this is a count. So R is actually an index into that row. So it starts at zero and then ends at the last row. Uh, and it's just a number, zero, one, two, three, and so forth. But get string, this function actually expects this number. And then for the second parameter, expects either the column count, so a number, an index, or the name of that header row. Uh, so for example, serving or calories or something like that. So this is really useful for us. Um, so we're going to write it here. And I'm not going to do anything in draw. I'm actually going to comment that out. Because we don't want to do this con continuously. We only want to do it in setup once. So I'm going to make a loop, let r. And note that this can be called i or row index or whatever. It's going to start at zero. <clears throat> note that this doesn't include our header row. So our header row is not part of this whole thing. And then while 
um, this is smaller than the table get row count note the upper cases we're going to add one to R every time and now we can extract the parts of that row that we want that we're interested in so specifically here we're interested in this name and this thing is called food and serving and it's super important that we get this name right so I'm go just going to call it name um, and on table we can do get string so the first parameter for get string and the reference actually for that is here in table uh, so here you see all the methods that you can do there's also find and match and blah blah, blah. the ones that we're looking for specifically is uh, get string this one and it's retrieving a string so with a row and a column so the row idea and then either a string the name of the row uh, name of the column sorry or the integer the, the column id the number so r is our first parameter and then for the column we want to have the exact name so here it's called food and serving i'm just going to copy and paste to make sure i get it absolutely correct um, and now i'm just going to log that name so what i expect to see here is all the names of my foods so asparagus bell pepper broccoli and so forth so let's look at our file and we do so we see all of the names here cool that's what we expect I'm going to show you what happens if this is not right so if we have something else and this can be a tiny error so for example if we put this with a lower case we get into tr trouble it says cannot read property to string of undefined at table row get string so we can actually see that this is the problem at sketch so these are the internal ones but sketch.js line 13 is our actual sketch so this is the line that's the problem but we can't really tell what the problem is it's not saying like okay this column doesn't exist it's just giving us this weird error here unfortunately so if you see something like that make sure that the name is right and I'm going to do this again just to show you that uh, something's wrong here so the next thing that I want to get out here is a serving so this is the amount that you would normally eat in grams um, and by default if we log the table like we did before um, let's put that into comments for a while we see that for each row um, we can open these objects these are the the things that are inside the serving is actually treated as a string but we want to look at it as a number right we don't want to see it as a string we want to be able to count or use it for sizes or something else and there's a convenient method here in table instead of using get string we can use get num and that's going to retrieve a value from that table so in, uh, it's going to give us this number so get num are serving let's look good right um, and we get this error and this is what I want to show you this is even um, more difficult to solve but it's basically the same error as we saw before the only problem is it's super unreadable here it says undefined is nan not a number and that's because serving is actually spelled wrong in fact this is wrong in the table as you can see so food and serving is all uppercase or title case serving is lowercase calories uppercase and so forth so I, what I'm going to do here is change the name of this column to make sure that the file is correct um, and now this name is right and now the error goes away so make sure that these errors can be quite sneaky because we don't get any feedback on what specifically is wrong so make sure that you get these right okay now we can already do a visualization so the way that I want to visualize this super simple is just to have an X value that's going to be a random value between 0 and the whole width of the canvas and for Y I'm going to do the same thing but then for the height of the canvas um, I'm not going to use the serving for now but I'm just going to write text and note that Visual Studio Code makes this an uppercase T which is wrong uh, name X Y and now if everything goes right we see that we already get all of these food um, stuffs on our canvas here which is cool so that's good we're on the right track and now what I want to do for all of them is draw a circle where the size of the circle um, might be um, the serving size so I'm going to make a circle and what I want to do is use the same X and Y and use the serving size for this. And this is just the, the like the, the easiest thing that could work. And as you can see, it's drawing the circles, which is good, but they're in the wrong place and they're on top of the text and there's all kinds of weirdness and they're way too big. Um, 
So oftentimes you don't actually want to use this value immediately, but instead you want to convert that. Um, so you want to use the map function to convert the values from the range that they're in. In this case, they're oh, not serving, won't find it. In this case, they're in grams to a value that actually makes sense. In, in this case, the size of this um, the size of this circle. So map actually takes in the value. So what's the input value serving? And then it says, what's the start and stop value? So what's the minimum and maximum value that you expect for these values to come? And then we can basically check for that in our finder here. So we can see that the serving size is about, um, the minimum size is like 25 for green onion. Um, maximum serving size, like 145, 54. Uh, 166, 200, 280. So for watermelon, that's like 280. That's the maximum size. Um, so we're going to use map for the size of our circle. So we're going to make a variable size and say, well, that's going to map from the serving to a value that's between zero. So that's the minimum value uh, and uh, 280, that was the maximum value. And now what's the size of this circle going to be? And now this is kind of sneaky because this is a circle and I was expecting this to be the radius, but this is actually the diameter. So twice the size of the radius. Um, so the actual size of the circle. So this is between zero and let's say 100. We can change that later. And now instead of using si serving here, we're going to use size here. So let's check that out. So you see that they're way smaller. If we want them even smaller, we can change this value. So this is the, the target range. Where where do they belong? So 50, for example, maybe they're, those are all way too small. Um, but that looks much better here. And then as you can see is that the text is on top of that um, circle. And the reason why that is, is because uh, we use the X and Y value both for the text and for the circle. And by default, text is positioned at the position here, so at the baseline of the text, and then also on the left side of that text. But we want to actually be changing that using a command that's called text align. So text align we can use, and text align actually can take two parameters. Um, they're both useful for us in this case. The first parameter is uh, where do we want to align it horizontally, right, center, or left. And the second parameter is, do we want to align it to the top, to the center, to the baseline or the bottom? By default is the baseline, um, but we can change that. And this is actually really useful for us in a minute. So now we're just going to say center. So we're only specifying the first parameter here. And that's going to put that text in the middle, which is cool. But to make sure that the text appears below the circle, we actually want to add something to the circle. Now, we can add a, a value here, like 100 maybe. But that means that for very small um, sizes, this is going to be really small. And for big ones, it's going to not fit because this changes, right? So a better approach here is to actually use the size of that circle uh, here. Now, if you just use the size, there's still some distance between the two because the size is actually double the amount that we want. Remember, we started out from the middle here. So basically what we want is we want half of the size traverse half of the size and then maybe a little bit more. So it's size divided by two. And that positions this text right at the, the bottom of this circle is like the bottom of the baseline. So this is cool because now we can use text align as we did before to say, well, don't align it to the baseline, but align it to the top. So a second parameter here is going to say top and it's going to align that nicely to the top. So here, for example, you can see it really clearly and here as well. And so everything sort of fits nicely together. But it still has to have some room here. So we do plus five, for example, to make it a bit lower from that. And here for lemon, for example, works well. A very obvious question is how can we make the circles not overlap? And this is much trickier. So uh, we're not going to deal that with this. We're going to deal with it in the next video. Uh, but that's because we are just using random uh, positions here for all of these things. And that, of course, uh, turns that into a nightmare for positioning because now these things will overlap. So we have to find a different approach for that. But we'll come to that later. A better approach would be using grids here, for example. Um, so what we want to do here is then for uh, the color of those circles to actually use a different fill color. And the fill color is going to depend on the health 
the, the amount of calories. So going back to our file here, we can see that the calories range from about 10, like for lettuce, to about 100, 100, anything higher, 130 for an apple. Okay, that seems to be the maximum. So this is like super unhealthy. It's not, it's an apple, but like this is the most calories that we can have. And then the least is like uh, 70. So we're going to use that for the color here. So we're going to make a new parameter here. And we can't actually call it fill because there's a fill command inside of processing. So we have to use uh, our P5. We have to use a different uh, name. So let's call it fill color. Um, and this is going to depend on our calories. So first off, let's get our the calories here. Calories is equals tables get num r calories. And then we are going to map calories. And we want to basically make these um, from uh, white to black. So black is like really bad and white is really good. So the calories get range from 0 to 130 and the output range is from 0 to 255. And we can use that for fill. Uh, note that the autocomplete is actually doing the wrong thing here, uh, like this. Okay, you see that it still fills the name here. So after th that fill, I'm just going to set the fill back to zero, like this. So that's just the, the circle itself that has changed the fill color. Um, however, they're in the wrong order. So as you can see here, apple is here, but apple is super light because uh, this is the most positive value, but actually we want to reverse them. We want apple to be the dark one and lime, for example, to be a good one. And to do that, all we have to do is turn these values around. So remember, these are the output values, the, min the uh, minimum and maximum, in this case, the start and stop values. So it starts at 255 and stops at zero. And that turns this around. So it makes that an apple is really black and then a lettuce is really good. Uh, we can also use this fill color, by the way, um, if we uh, play with these values a little bit, we can actually make this a red color. So like something like this, for example, turns that into from black to red or something. Um, that makes it a bit nicer, maybe. Okay, so that's the basics of what I wanted to show you with data visualization. That's taking out these values, making sure that our data is actually in the correct format, taking out these values uh, using the CSV header row, but making sure that we actually format this correctly using the commas uh, and having only one header row, making sure that these names are correct and showing you what happens if they are not, uh, looping over them and then actually using uh, these different properties of that data to actually connect those to either fill color or circles. There's, of course, much more to show you about data visualization, but just this is just the start of, of making something. So that's what I wanted to show you.